In this video, we'll go over some of the commonly used commands in Perfect Match. The basics and fundamentals were already covered in Part 1. So I'll start by opening SlabSmith and then Perfect Match, and then I'll open a pre-drawn DXF of a kitchen. This is the same drawing that I used in the first video. I've chosen to add Backsplash as well. And I'll use the same slab, which I know the ID number was 220, so I'll open it that way. The slab and the template come in at random locations in the left window. So I'm going to move the parts a little closer to the slab. And instead of picking and moving one part at a time, I'll group them together. To create a group, simply click and pull a window around the parts that you want to group together. And when they are grouped, you will see a green box enclosing them. So you can click on any of the parts and drag to move the group instead of a singular part. And then press your escape key on your keyboard to ungroup the parts. Then we can move separate parts onto the slab as we did in the first video. Now the first command that I may choose to use is slab margin. Slab margin creates a boundary or border around the slab that the parts can't go across. We can find and or change the value of slab margin by opening the properties panel on the left side. And if I change the value to 0.5 or a half inch, that means that all parts will stay a half inch from the border of the slab. Type the value and press the enter key to set the distance. And now I can bump the part against that margin. I'll click and hold down to select the part as before, and then I'll press and hold the Alt key on my keyboard. And I can slide the part up against an edge or into the corner. And to keep it a half inch away, let up on the clicker before the Alt key. I'll zoom in to show how the parts stayed away from the innermost portion of the slab, a half inch to the inside of the slab's border. Now it looks like I can put the next part up here against the seam on this edge. So I'll go grab this part and move it to the inside of the border of the slab. And I'll use bump mode again by clicking and holding down on the part and then holding my Alt key. And I'll push and bump this part against both the border of the slab and the other part as well. Remember to let up on the clicker before the Alt key. As before, bump mode kept the part a half inch away from the slab's border. It also kept a distance between part and part. The distance used was whatever we had set in this distance field at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to zoom in on this seam to see if the flow is acceptable. And when I'm satisfied, I can zoom to the extents by double-clicking on my scroll wheel. And I'll do the same in the left window so I can see my parts of my slab. This third part won't fit onto the slab in its vertical orientation. So I'll want to rotate it 90 degrees. Whenever you click on a part, it becomes selected, which you'll see by the green enclosing rectangle. This means that when I choose a command, it will just happen to the part that's pre-selected. I'm going to choose to rotate this part counterclockwise 90 degrees. And as you can see when I pick the command, it automatically happens to the pre-selected part. Also note that since I picked that command, that it is still active, as shown in the text box attached to my arrow. Which means every time I click on the part, including to go move it, 
that that command will happen. Rotate 90 degrees. Press your escape key to get out of any command. You can also press your escape key to deselect a part. I use my escape key quite often while working in Perfect Match. Next, I might move this third piece into a rough, maybe temporary position. And I'm going to group these parts together so that I can move them over to the left and place the backsplash on the right side. And for video's sake, I'll move them too far so that the one part overlaps a slab border. Anytime you see a part turn red, it means it has crossed the slab margin border. I'll use bump mode to place this backsplash towards the edge of the slab. If you press the Alt key too early, bump mode will be enabled and you won't be able to get the part onto the slab. So first, I'll click and drag the part to within the border, and then I can enable bump mode to locate it by pulling it over and up into position. Remember to release your clicker before the Alt key. Now I'll group these parts back together so that I can bring them over towards the backsplash. Once I get them close and my third part onto the slab, I'll press and hold my Alt key to go into bump mode so I can use the spacing that I have set below. Now even though I'm satisfied with the flow on the finish countertop side in the right window, I might want to move the backsplash slightly down so I can get one collinear saw cut across both pieces. I'm going to use Common Line Plus, which is very similar to the Join Common Line that we use on the Park Industries saw toolbar. This command also uses the value that we have set below for spacing. I want the backsplash to move down, so I'll select that as the edge to be moved, and then I'll select the countertop as the edge to move it to. And that aligns the top of the two pieces so I can cut them with one continuous cut of the saw blade. And the spacing is what I have set below. And the flow between the backsplash and the part in the right window still looks good. Let's zoom out and see if we can fit the last two backsplashes onto the slab. I know that this edge of this backsplash goes to this edge of this part. And we already know that we can rotate and then we can use common line to align the backsplash to the edge of the part. However, this time I'm going to turn on and use snap mode. Snap mode may be the easiest and most useful function in Perfect Match. And as instructed, to click on the edge or the line of the part that I want to move, I'll click and hold down, and then I can drag it against any other part and it will automatically align, and if I want, I can drop it so that endpoint matches an endpoint. So I'll pull this part back around and bring it to the proper edge, and when I see the X's, I'll let up on my clicker to set it down. And as we can see in the right window, that the flow between the part and the backsplash are perfect. I might, however, choose to adjust and move that countertop piece around so that the seam aligns a little bit better with the other part. And since I'd like to maintain or keep the distance or alignment between the backsplash and the countertop, I will group them together to move them as one. And for this, I may use Nudge. To use Nudge, first of all we'll check and or change the distance. I'm going to set the Nudge distance to 1 inch. And to use Nudge, my pre-selected part, or in this case, parts, 
I can nudge by pressing my arrow keys on my keyboard. Each time I press an arrow key, my parts move one inch in that direction. And when needed, I can decrease the value of my nudge distance to fine tune the position of my parts. And now, when I'm satisfied with the layout of those parts, I'll place my third and final backsplash. Now I feel that this backsplash is too long, especially for this slab. So I can put a seam in it. I'll choose dynamic seams from the toolbar. I would like a straight seam and perpendicular to the edge that I select. I'll leave the snap enabled to snap to key geometry, which includes endpoint and midpoint. And I can also set a distance to snap from one of the endpoints. And as I move my cursor along the edge of one of my parts, I will see the snaps light up. The end of, and then 24 inches in, and then the midpoint, is where I'll click to create my seam. And that divides my backsplash in half, and also labels the matching ends. And now I have room to place them on the slab. And we can move them into location, we can rotate them, we can move them around with nudge. For this example, I'll just find a spot on the slab for them. You can spend as much time as you wish laying them out to get the veins to match as well as you can. Another tool that may be helpful can flip the backsplash up as they would appear in the kitchen. We'll be able to view this three-dimensional look better in isometric view. And I'll also zoom in on these ends to help and ensure that I select the correct edges to flip up. Make sure nothing's pre-selected before choosing this command. Assign Backsplash to Counter. And when you choose this command, follow the prompts. The first being to select the bottom edge of the backsplash. Like most commands, we not only select the edge, but also closer to one end or the other. This also applies when we select the edge of the countertop that it belongs to. And if done properly, you can see the backsplash will flip up along the countertop's edge. And it is very helpful to zoom in on the end of the countertop and ends of the backsplash. And if you make a mistake, there is an undo underneath the edit. And with the backsplashes all flipped up, it's easier to see the flow of the veins. You can move the backsplashes around as much as you'd like to get a satisfactory matching. And another option that you have is to bring in another slab. You can choose to bring in slab and search through inventory, or again, bring in a slab by ID. It is important when you bring in multiple slabs that each slab has a different ID. And you can move as many parts as you would like on the second slab and rotate and so on to see if it's worth the extra cost to get better vein matching. Then if we choose to export the DXF, each slab will be exported independently. And if we decide to use only one slab, we can go and delete one or both of them if we wish. And I'll move my backsplash pieces back on to the first slab. Spend as much time as you wish moving your parts around. And when you're satisfied, we can go to export the DXF and bring it into AlphaCam to create our program. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.